Section 13.3, The Fundamental Theorem of Line Integrals, Video 3. Independence of Path. Oh, what do I mean by independence of path? Well, it's exactly what its name implies. That whatever we're doing is independent of the path that we take. So, for example, let's say that we have two paths that go from point A to point B. We'll say the first path is C1, and the second path is C2. Now we're going to make sure these paths don't cross each other. We'll talk more about that in future videos. Independence of path means that when we evaluate the line integral, it does not matter which path we take. It doesn't matter if it's one of these two paths or any other path that gets from A to B. Sorry, let me draw some arrows indicating the orientation of these paths. If the integral over a curve of some vector function f dr is independent of path, C1 of f dot dr is equal to the integral over the curve C2 of f dot dr, whatever C1 and C2 have the same initial and terminal points. We've already seen an example of this in the previous videos concerning the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So for example, the line integral over a curve C of the gradient of some scalar function, dot dr, is independent of path. Why? Because as we just saw in the previous two videos, the value of this integral only depends upon the initial and terminal points of the path. It did not say anything about how the path went, only where it began and where it ended. So that's convenient, but we're still trying to answer the question, when can we look at an, a, uh, the integrand in a line integral and go, you're the gradient of something, or you're a conservative vector function. Because if you are, then we get to say independent of path, and we get to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Now, path independence actually has some pretty nifty implications. Um, and again, path independence just means that the line integral does not depend on the path, it only depends upon where you start and where you end. So what can we say about a line integral when the curve is closed? And what do I mean by a closed curve? I mean a curve whose initial point is the same as its terminal point. So let's suppose C is a closed curve. In other words, if it's defined by a vector function R of T on the interval AB, we would have that and R of A is equal to R of B. It ends where it starts. If the integral, the line integral, is path independent, independent, then what do you think the line integral over that closed curve would equal? may not be intuitive, but let's see if we can figure it out. So let's take some curve C. We'll just make it nice and simple. 
So R of A is equal to R of B. Okay. Well, if we're going to talk about being path independent, then we need to talk about two paths that have the same initial point and the same terminal, terminal point. Right now we have one path whose initial and terminal point coincide. But we can partition this into two paths by picking some point in the middle. Now keep in mind that this R is defined from A to B, so let's pick some point in the middle and call it C. So let's choose some point C, an element of the open interval AB. Open because we don't want it to be the beginning and we don't want it to be the end, we want it to be somewhere in between. So this would be R and C right here. And let's think about this closed loop as being the union of two paths. Let's say the first path is on A to C. And then the second path is on C to B. So in other words, we're just stopping in between and saying, hey, here's one, here's a path from here to here, and here's another path from there to there. Well, we know that the line integral over a curve of some function dot dr can be written as the sum of the line integrals over the union of curves that make the whole curve. In other words, we can say that it's the integral over C1 of f dot dr plus the integral, line integral over C2 of f dot dr. In other words, just do the line integral from here to here. Now add the line integral from there to there. Okay. Well, we're still looking to connect this to the concept of path independence, meaning that we need two paths that start and end at the same place. C1 and C2 do not start and end at the same place. C1 ends here, which is where C2 starts, and then C2 starts, ends here, which is where C1 begins. We need both of these paths starting and ending at the same place. How can we do that? Easy. Reverse the orientation of C2. In other words, if C2 gets reversed, let me erase the blue arrows. That will give it the same initial and terminal points as C1, but we can't call this C2 anymore. When we reverse the orientation of the path, we call that negative C2. And recall that when we reverse the orientation of a path, we get the negative of the value of the original line integral. So what that means is, while the first line integral over C1 is just sitting there, let us reverse the orientation of C2, which will change the sign of its integral. Okay, so what good does that do us? Well, if we're assuming path independence, then that means any path with the same initial point and the same terminal point will have the same value. So in other words, the line integral over C1 is equal to the line integral over negative C2 because we're assuming path independence. So this integral and this integral are equal due to path independence. And I can't spell dependence, independence. Well, if two things are equal and you subtract them, that usually gives you zero. And it does here. So that's a pretty nifty result. The result being if you are a path independent integral, which is dependent on what you're integrating, then your line integral over a closed curve is equal to zero. I think that's worth summarizing. And by the way, the reason I'm going through some of these proofs is, although I know most of you are probably going into a physics and engineering direction, some of you are going down the theoretical math path, which is great, love it. And when you get to junior and senior level courses in math degrees and graduate level courses in math degrees, 
it's safe to say that at least 75% of what you're going to be doing is stating and proving things. That's what theoretical math is about, in my opinion. So I'm doing a lot of these proofs to prepare you for what it's going to look like if you continue down a bachelor's degree, master's degree, or doctoral degree in mathematics. So let's summarize this independence of path uh, comment. Suppose C is a closed curve. In other words, your curve has the same initial and terminal points. If the line integral is path independent, then that line integral is equal to zero. Pretty nice result because it says don't even bother doing the integral. If you're path independent, how do we determine that? We'll figure it out in a moment. If you're path independent, then any line integral over a closed curve will always equal zero. Nice result. Sorry, I just realized that I may have written a few things off the screen, but it looks like it was all good.